Hello and welcome to Business as Usual. Today is my longtime friend Adam Riley from All the Time IT. Going to be talking a little bit about technology today. Adam, welcome to the show. Hey Kevin, how are you? So, living the dream as always, brother. Want to jump right in? Can you offer just some general tips on p computer performance? Because I see most of us, you know, we get excited, we get a brand new PC. And then a couple months later, you're like, it just doesn't seem to be running quite as quick as it used to. Any general tips on how to make sure we kind of maximize performance? Certainly, just from a general standpoint, I mean, you really want to make sure that you're running an, an antivirus program. Can you, there's a few out there that are, are good. Um, don't necessarily run the one that came with your machine. Do a little bit of research. Currently, Webroot is really good. ESET is really good. Uh, there's a few others as well. But make sure it's a paid subscription because it really will, it updates constantly and it'll scan for you automatically, which is really where most people falter. Yes, you have the program, but if you don't run it manually, when are you going to get the protection? You're just not. So the other thing is you have to protect against malware as well. So viruses and malware, they are two different things. They act differently. And no one company can really protect you against both. So we recommend a blended approach to get the best security. But now the key, Adam, is to pick a good virus protection program. Um, I came across a friend not that long ago. He was running three virus protection programs. That He's is, like, they're all good, so I figure if I have triple protection, nothing could possibly go wrong. Nothing on his computer would work. Yes, so it's, it's a good thought, right? <laughs> but you don't want to run more than one of each. So you want to run one malware, one antivirus, because if you have three different programs, or even two, scanning all of your files constantly, your machine is really going to slow down, and you'll get the performance hit that your friend was seeing, which I like his logic, and I like the fact that he did want to, yeah. you know, really protect his computer, but unfortunately... Well, it's hard to make fun of him because, like you said, from a logical standpoint, I could see his thought process. Sure. But you're like, you know, I'm having a lot of problems, you know, and he's like, you know, I have three different virus... I'm like, well, there's your first problem, my friend. Sometimes <laughs> they'll see each other yeah. as a problem, sure, you yeah. know, as a virus. Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. So now, I know the question you must get all the time is, hey, Adam, I'm thinking about going out and buying a new PC. Do you have any recommendations? Now, if someone's sitting at home, is surfing the internet, maybe sending an occasional email, does it really make that much of a difference as what name's on the computer? For the most part, no. It really doesn't. They're all you know, reasonable quality. Uh, we typically, in the business environment, it is much more important. Sure. Because you, you're, you're banging them around a lot more, you're traveling with them, you're working on them for many, many more hours, typically per day, than you would in a residential type situation. So, in that case, we do recommend going with a business class machine, you know, a, a Lenovo, a Dell, yep. something along those lines. You can buy a $300 machine for your business, but I wouldn't really recommend it. You sure. want to spend a little bit more just because you will, you want to get those later years out of that machine. So, we always recommend getting something a little bit more powerful, an i5 processor, a little bit more RAM. That way, you can keep that machine for four, maybe five years. You know, we try to get those type of warranties on machines as well, because then you don't have to worry about it. It's a longer term kind of investment, but I over agree. the like course said, of it. It depends what you're doing with it. If you're just, exactly. you know, hey, um, I'm FaceTime, you know. Um, if you're at home, right, yeah, three doing nothing bucks. besides jumping on every now and then. But if, if you're at home, think about if you really even need that laptop, right? If What are you yeah. doing? Think about that. If you're yeah. not typing a whole lot, Honestly, you might be much happier with a tablet or the, the new Microsoft Surface, yep. something along those lines, because they do have that, you know, more of the touch. If you're surfing Facebook in the app form, it's, it's a fantastic experience versus the web. It is it's kind of neat, but you know, it's funny because I was considering doing that so I remember how many emails I send a day. And yes. to your point, you know, I mean, I know that they have the keyboards now, but just using my, my tablet, my Nexpense tablet at home, and I'm like, you know, it's like, okay, this is taking all day. If you, you know? type, yeah. if you type any real amount, yeah. you're not going to be real happy on a tablet. This is the, the one kind of sticking point that we've seen in the business mm -hmm. environment. People want the tablets that the executives sure. all want to go yeah. to, iPads and stuff. But uh, then it's like, oh, I got to type a lot of emails. So it doesn't, they don't, they're not too happy with it. Yeah, like I said, unless you got a really nice keypad with it, but even then, it's, a, it, it's not the same experience. Yeah, I agree, it's a little more challenging and stuff. So, um, got a lot of friends out there that love those free games. They're not oh, really yeah. free, are they? Nothing is free. Um, so, you know, anything that is out there for free, they're either selling advertising, 
which they're tracking everything that you search and that kind of thing. Yeah. And that's why when you search on your phone for you know something on Amazon, you see it on your PC yeah. and you're everywhere else because it's, it's haunting you for the mm. next three right, weeks yeah, yeah. in every So be careful bag. what you look for. Yes, but I mean, for the most part, the, yeah. the phones are built you know, to a certain kind of security standard. Sure, yeah. There's not a, there are certainly threats to phones, but again, antivirus on your phone is a good idea. And you know, the, the free apps, Apple, on the Apple side, you actually have a little bit more protection because Apple is very, very tight and controlled about who can build programs and where you can even get them. You can really only get them from the Apple store. On the Google Droid side, sure. You can get them from anywhere. Yep. So you, there's a lot, a, not a lot more risk, but there's certainly much more risk than. But I know I have family and friends that you know are still on PCs and they love to play you know all the various slot games and everything else. Those and like, yes. My machine's running really slow now. Uh, okay, how many games have you downloaded recently, Adam? Those well, you yes. Know, I'm Those playing games. every game there is possible. <laughs> you know, it's like oh, well, you're having fun with your computer, but that's probably where the rest of the stuff's coming from, right? Typically those types of things, anything that on a PC that you're installing for free is going to have something attached to it and that's how they provide it to you for free. A lot of times it will be like Adobe Reader or you know this coupon printer or right, yeah. a, a toolbar or something like yeah. that and that is who's paying them to basically so that they can be in business and, and continue on. But yes, that stuff is slowing down your machine. It's, they're putting spyware on your machine or just whatever they've loaded you probably don't need and it's taking resources, it's reporting back. Anything that you're installing is reporting back to somebody. It's interesting, you know, the quote unquote big brother is shove it all. As you mentioned earlier, you know, you start searching because you want to buy a new car and then every ad you see to on your tablet or your PC is a car ad. Yes. And for, for whatever reason I am, it doesn't bother me in the least bit. I got some friends that are like, oh my God, you know, but it's just like you said, everything's being tracked, right? It is. Mm -hmm. It is being tracked, and, and it's all for advertising data. It's they want to know what you might buy so that they can sell you, sell advertising sure. space, and then somebody else can sell you product. The a lot of people don't realize, but one of the most popular apps that almost everyone has on their phone and on their computer is is the Weather Channel. The Weather sure. Channel app, IBM bought them so yep. that they could find out all kinds of things because everybody installs it, everybody leaves it running and they check it all the time. So they're collecting all kinds of weather pattern data, shopping patterns, and they sell all that to big businesses. Yep. Anything that you do on the web, while it seems like it's just kind of doesn't mean anything, it means something because they are trying to find predictive patterns on everything that's done. Because I was chuckling, um, we were up in Maine this weekend, and I, um, I was waiting to get my ice cream, to be honest. I was jumped on Facebook, and sure enough, there was an ad for you know another place right down the street. So that's yeah. actually yeah. A, a new type of advertising yeah. that they've started rec pretty recently. Mm -hmm. It's um, geo-targeted. Sure, yeah. So if you're within a certain range of right, something, yeah. you'll get an advertisement yeah. for businesses. And I fell for it. I went and got the burrito. I mean, who doesn't, yeah. right? I'm like, hey, I like burritos. <laughs> so I went and got it. You're going to tell me stuff. where some good food is? I'm yeah. there. Well, like I said, you know, I know some people get, you know, worked up about that. I, I don't mind that at all because if you're exposing me to a business that I don't know about and you guys know how much I love to eat, you know, then I'm like, hey, if there's pizza that I don't know about, I want to know about it and stuff. So. Well, I mean, even without the, there's, you're gonna, there's impact from everything, right? The, the donut shack. Yep. I mean, you told me about the donut shack. Yeah, I love the donut shack. Yeah. That was the same I type of thing. I haven't found anyone who does it. No, and, and <laughs> I don't it's know how you so could, good. You right? know? Yeah. But it's, it's the same type of thing. It's just like telling somebody about yeah. it. And in this case, it's just you're in a certain geographic sure. area. Yeah. And you know what? Obviously, it works because people are using it. People are making money. People mm. are still you know, promoting their business with it. So one of the things I see happen from time to time is you go and you buy that new PC and it comes with X amount of months of virus protection. How do you make sure, you know, I know it comes up, you are expired, but yes. sometimes, you know, people accidentally turn off their virus protection. How do you make sure that the virus protection is staying up to date for an average person that doesn't know to go into programs or something like that? So typically you, you would want to check your antivirus, you know, on occasion every week or so, every month or so, maybe if you have a certain day that you do a certain chore or something, you maybe uh, put the flea medicine on the, yep. the dog or the cat or whatever. You just want to once in a while make sure you go in, you check, 
You so look down at the, the license. Bottom of the tray and just exactly click, click, right click, by click, the click. clock. You'll see the little icon, whether it's you know for whatever program that you use. Take a look at your license. Make sure you got plenty of time left. Make sure that the the virus definition database is up to date. Should be from today or yesterday. Yeah. If it's not, there's a problem. And if it if they're still telling you it's the most up to date, it might be time to look at another antivirus company because it should be updated, some of them, uh, multiple times a day. So I want to talk a little bit about the cloud, my favorite thing sure. in the whole wide world. Um, I'm a big fan of it. Of, of, Me you too. Know, um, Cheryl and I, we work together obviously, we share a lot of stuff through the cloud. Is it okay, is it safe? So a lot of people, you know, they hear the cloud and it's sure. so scary. Yeah. But really the big secret of the cloud is it's just a server yeah. somewhere else that a really professional team of people take care of. Yep. So it's in way better hands than it could be in, in your office. Not to be disrespectful, but sure. big companies like Microsoft, you know, Office 365 is such a great tool. Same thing with like a Google Apps. They provide your business with so many different tools, but the back end, the expensive part, the maintenance the, of the big server software, Exchange server is very expensive to maintain. Taking that to an Office 365 type situation for your email, saves you a lot of time, money, resources. You couldn't possibly spend enough money to secure your server the yep. same way that a cloud-based service. They're giving you a share of something. And you know, it's, it meets all the regulation requirements. If you need HIPAA, if you need you know, any of the others, there's many industries that have different types of regulations that they need to meet certain security requirements. But when you, when you look at these bigger services, they have those things because they've they've protected these data centers because if they have a breach, they lose tons and tons of customers. Sure, yeah. You know, your server, where in the past, the really the common sense thing to do was, well, if we put it here, we know it's it's mine, it's under right. our control. But because of the, the varied threats and just the prolific nature of the, the hacker type mm -hmm. industry and, and viruses and all that stuff, it's become a, a far greater feat to protect your own technology. Yeah. And that's where the the really the cloud-based things come in because they have that technology there. You know, they're going to protect that piece of what you're using and they can provide you with a lot more pieces in that mix. Uh, we have clients that use Office 365 and if you need to add different pieces of the Microsoft platform, it's very simple. You just kind of add it in. They've they built out it's no longer just email calendar and the office program. Now you can get everything from business intelligence, different uh, messaging, which you know a lot of companies do use that instant messaging feature. Yep. But you have to remember that if you're using just a standalone messenger program, all of those conversations and, and ideas are, are going to disappear because you need to put them into a central system so that that stuff stays as part of a project instead of you know just kind of falling off onto the wayside. Little, small bigger companies, everyone can benefit from something like Office 365. It just, if you're dealing with internal hardware and software in your company, especially aging stuff, it's really a good way to get out of a lot of purchasing of software and, and hardware for your business. Let's just say a lot of people just get really sad because they're storing all their files in one machine, one bad hard drive later, and you're going, okay, you know, the last four years of my baby's pictures were on that hard drive. So my baby is now zero years old again, you know, and yeah. everything, all your memories are gone. And like I said, people don't spend a lot of time thinking about that, you know, of, of the risks that can happen. So from either whether you're a business user or a home user, you know, a, you know we're going to talk about online backups in a, in a minute, but making sure that, you know, you not have that single point of failure where, you know, all of a sudden, you, you know, I, I had a guy years ago reach out to me and ask me for two referrals someone that could restore a hard drive or a family law attorney because his wife was going to divorce him because every picture they've ever had with the three-year-old baby was on that machine. You know, sure. chuckle, chuckle, but he's like, it's well, a big deal. it's a different world today, right? Mm -hmm. when, when you used to go visit your grandparents, what was, you know, tucked away somewhere? Mm -hmm. The stack of photo albums, yep. right? And that's, and the only real They're danger of losing now. them all was a <laughs> flood or a fire. Yeah, right, yeah. And... But today, every, nobody really prints out pictures all that True. often. True. So everything is stored on your phone, it's stored yeah. on your computer, and you know everyone fills up their phone so quickly yeah. that you're dumping it onto the computer. We highly recommend using an online backup service. There's a few great ones out there. 
crash plan carbonite, um, you know, and there's many others. Do your research, see what you really need, but they're all automatic. Mm -hmm. So you install a little piece of software, you tell it what folders you want, and that's it. Yeah. You just check on it once in a while. I was going to say that's the key: is making sure you check and to make so, sure. You didn't and I've turn actually, it off again. because I'm I'm an IT guy, I at one point had to get a new laptop. So what I did is to test. I used I was using Carbonite at the time. I actually still am, and so I said, okay, I'm going to basically pretend my machine is is gone. Yeah. It fell in into a puddle or something. Right, yeah. So I took it, put it to the side, bought a new machine and restored it completely from the cloud. Everything was great, all my files were returned, and everything worked. So that's the, the thing about having, you know, in the business environment, having someone looking at your technology, even a small business. You need to have someone look and make sure that you're doing all the things that you can be doing to protect your business. One huge data loss can put you out of business. Oh, it definitely can, you know. You know, you can lose all kinds of data or work that you've been working on, research, and it's not that expensive. It's, you know, you, you spend all this money on equipment and people and, and your payroll is, is enormous. Let's make sure that things run smoothly for your business. And it doesn't have to be an expensive ordeal. It just needs to be a pair of eyes that kind of review your systems and make sure that things work properly. And, and you're thinking about all the things. Like a disaster recovery, you wouldn't believe how many businesses don't have a backup. I can remember back in my corporate days having to sit down and, and, and build a disaster recovery plan. And it's amazing the things you just forget. Yes. You're like, well, if you don't do it this? every day, yeah, you know, it's not what you do. Like you literally had to you know, take people off site and say, okay, now you're in a different location. What would you need if we had to be in this building? And you forget, you know, just, oh yeah, we use this printer that you know, is customized for this or something. That's right. It's, you know, it's real and challenging. And every environment is a little bit yeah. different. So what we do is we basically will talk to the business owner, we'll look at what they're doing, but we also have a big set of things that we're like, okay, you know, this, 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 and this, we need to make sure that your backups are local and offsite. You know, you don't want to be backing up to a USB memory stick or a hard drive that somebody takes home once in a while. Yep. It's very simple for that whole system to break down, slow down, or just not be done at all. It is a challenging, you know, we've all seen it where, you know, they're all proud of themselves. I back it up and it's right next to the server. Okay, so Adam, what if something happens in this one room, both your server and your backup are in the same exact location? One of the big things when people bring that up, the first thing that I do is I look up and nine out of 10 times, there's a sprinkler head above <laughs> the server that's and we'll the hard it. drive. That's what will save it. Exactly. <laughs> It'll float it away is right, what yeah. it will do. Yeah, right. It'll, It'll total put loss. it right out. Yeah. Total loss. But I mean, like you said, if you're not an IT person, you can see how you can make that, hey, you know, you told me it was really important to back it up, Adam. I am backing it up. Yep. But, you know. There's but, other okay. layers. There's or, multiple layers to Or that even, you know, backup. even like you said, with all the, bio, the regulations now, someone taking home that drive. So now it's you know in your car and God yes. forbid something happens to your car and so you know it got to the point. It's a where huge risk. Back in my corporate days, it was really cool to have a laptop. Oh yeah. And we would take it home because you know hey we're cool. When you use it, like four out of five days, wouldn't even open it. But hey, That's I right. my laptop. But then Just it got case. to the point where you saw the security risk, and I'm like, I'm not taking that out of the building in a million years. I don't care if it's encrypted or what it is. I'm bound to have a file with customer data on it. And yes. I don't want to have to answer for that when someone steals it out of my car because I wanted to be cool and take my laptop home. Exactly, and it's laptops. I mean, who, very few people use desktops anymore. Right, if yeah. your des if your laptop is leaving the building for you know a in a business situation, you should really think about encryption, especially if you have any customer data. You're you're probably required yeah. to, and it's not a big deal. It's not super expensive. It's but it's a huge huge safeguard. The thing with computers that a lot of people don't realize is if you can get it physically in your hands, most of the security can be bypassed Same. pretty quickly. Yep. Um, you know, most IT guys can crack into your computer very quickly. Yep. I know that I can. Now, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing it for devious things, but sure. hey, you know what? You, when you forgot your password and could not remember what it was, yep. there's gotta be a backdoor way for me to get you, right, at yep. least your files, sure. not necessarily yep. back to an operating situation. Right, yep. 
But if I can at least get your files, that's hugely helpful I remember helpful when, to you. when we first encrypted them, they're like, you've got to remember this password. This is life and death. Yes. You know, so don't put some random thing or you're walking by Adam and you made your password Adam, you know, because you're the guy where, in front of me at the time. And that's where for your business, working with, you know, a professional company, you know, mm -hmm. we are a managed IT firm. So we think about these things. Yes, it's, it's not that difficult to set up your encryption. But are you going to think about putting that second user on there, hmm. you know, documenting the, all the passwords and everything, and then making sure three months down the road when somebody forgets, you know, are you going to have that documentation ready to go to get that person into the computer hmm. instead of a full rebuild? Because yeah. with encryption, there is no second chances. Right. If you lose that password, it's actually over. You have to format the drive. Crazy. So um, the big question from forever. Should I turn off my computer every night when I go home? So realistically, computers are built like refrigerators. Yeah. But laptops, not so much. Desktops are yep. laptops, not so much. The bigger thing is actually not leaving them plugged in all the time for a laptop. Because yeah, you'll actually burn out the battery. Yep. Um, but desktops, it's OK to leave it on all the time. Yep. They are like built like refrigerators, sure. meant to run pretty much all the time. We have PCs, servers, but even just basic machines in the corporate environment that run 24-7, 365 for years. Yep. Some of them, I've, we have machines that have been running for 10 years, and they just sit. So let's go back to the laptop. So occasionally I should unplug it and use it on battery? Yeah, actually you'll get much better battery life, out mm, like longer. Yep. You'll notice that typically you know, a year or two or so, the battery starts to fall off. You used to last, say, five hours, right, then you're yeah. down to three, then you're down yeah. to one. I mean, I've been in the docking station for, for two years, but to your point, the battery only charges to like 94% now. Well, once in a while, see how long actually now you get yeah. for battery life. The newer laptops are much better. The charging, charging yeah. modules will regulate. Um, it was much more of a problem in the past. But you know, when people's batteries burn out in a year because they leave them plugged in, they get pretty upset at the the company sure, and absolutely. they say listen so, fix it so they did but there's still some some you know things that you can do to make sure that your battery life same thing with your phone you know um, if you plug it in when it's basically dead mm. instead of you know 20 times a day you're going to get better battery life out of yeah, it. Yeah, I think we all have a tendency to be guilty of that I mean as soon as I walk sit and walk into as soon as I sit down in the car I plug in and it's times my battery's already at 98%, but, so I don't but need to. But you're using, see, and that's the other thing is how you use your phone. You yep. know, so in some cases you don't have a lot, you know, you're going into events, you need your phone for that during that time. Sure, yeah. You're burning up battery, and then you, you're kind of getting a few minutes to get a few. Right, yeah. You have to do it that way. Yep. It's just the way that you operate, which is fine. You just know that and get your battery replaced once sure, in a while. Yep. You know, I'm on, I think, a little over a year, year and a half on this phone maybe yep. close to two and then my battery's starting to I have to charge it halfway through the day or so yep. I mean I'm a pretty f heavy phone user because sure. I'm always emailing and stuff I don't really play games but yep. um, certainly I'm surfing the web with looking up issues and stuff I want to talk a little bit about public Wi-Fi spots so I had, okay. I had a buddy um, go on vacation and I think he may have logged into the computer at their resort and right away um, we picked up a virus started emailing all his contacts Yes. Um, so public Wi-Fi, the problem is, there's two problems actually. One is that they may n have almost no security and it's just encrypting, uh, not encrypting any of your data. Yeah. So anything that you send, certainly don't send, you know, don't go on your bank right. on, on a public Wi-Fi. Sure, yeah. Because you don't know if they're, especially in a foreign country, even here, it's very common. People are skimming, you know, they're, they're scanning the Wi-Fi. So in IT, we have a tool called a network packet sniffer and what it basically does is it reads all the packets that are sent out um, the real bits and bytes of data and it's clear text so kind of so we can kind of pull anything off of it but if the Wi-Fi network is not encrypted then that's what you're sending your passwords and stuff yep. are plain text so we can pull them right out of the air essentially yep. not really but sure. essentially from that signal we can we'll have your password and then where, you know, it could be the guy in the coffee shop. That's kind of the thing. It's more of a, actually a local issue, like, so within your proximity, so it would be anyone on that network would actually be your biggest threat yep. instead of on the internet. Because once it gets out there, 
you know, it, it but, goes but through. But people just systems. think, you know, um, not everyone has unlimited data. So you're like, oh, I'm in a coffee shop, I'll hop on the Wi-Fi, so I'm not using my data plan. You know, listen to music or just whatever. You know, but it well, could, could be a risk though if you're putting passwords in. So don't go on your bank. Okay, yep. don't go into anything that's critical. Uh, if you travel overseas. When you get back, change all your passwords. Yep. You know, you, you really shouldn't bring your computer overseas. It's not almost everywhere you go, you're going to get, you're going to pick up something, um, especially the more hacking countries. Yep. Uh, certainly, China is, we've had clients that travel to China and their machines typically get infected. Um, so, it's things to think about, but certainly on, if you're on public Wi Fi, don't, no banking information, nothing real super critical. You, you want to go on Facebook to save your data, you want to go on you know, Snapchat, whatever yeah. it is, that's fine. Not, but don't log know. into email? <laughs> I mean, the risk, honestly, the risk is kind of low yep. because it would have to be somebody kind of in that local area. Sure. Yep. But the risk is there. Um, you should be changing your passwords on everything on a consistent basis. Smart. I know it's terrible. I know nobody wants to do it. Mm. It's hard you know, to remember the password you have to keep changing. But honestly, that is the biggest way that people get into your data, because you have you know Sparky one two three as mm. your password, and it's not that they're guessing your password necessarily; they're hitting your account and every other account they're trying to break with a password list right. of all the common passwords. Mm. So it doesn't matter if you think that using your pet's name and a couple of silly numbers right, yeah. is a good password. It might be for someone directly going after your sure. machine. Yep. But when they're hitting it against a password list, you have no chance. So uh, we often, when we think of security risks, we think of our PCs and our laptops. What are the security risks of using our tablets and our phones? So those are a little bit tighter controlled just because of the way that they're designed. Every, most everything is app-based. There is still a risk. Um, as you get into like the Surface, that's a, a real Microsoft machine that's running a regular Windows operating system. So you have the exact same risks as a PC. The iPad and the, the Google Droid tablets, um, many companies make them, they have less risk only because they don't have that actual PC environment. But, and again, the Apple side, you're a little bit more secure because the only place you can get apps is the, the, you know, the Apple yep. iTunes store. The Droid side, because you can get them anywhere, it's still secure because they have the operating systems locked down. If you unlock it, you can do a lot more with it, but then you open yourself up to a lot more risk. Awesome, Adam, really appreciate you taking the time of the day to come on the show. Simple as that, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.